Now let's look at op-amp circuits with phasers. With op-amps, you typically use voltage nodes with the stipulation that V plus equals V minus. Same thing with phasers, so now we're going to be using complex numbers. Let's start out with a single pole low pass filter. Suppose x of t is 3 sine of 50t. Find y of t. The procedure will be convert to phasers. Resistors stay the same. The input and the capacitor become their phasor impedance. Now I'll write the voltage node equations just like we did at DC. To do that, I would represent uh, first define a ground reference, already done. I'll define the voltage, voltage nodes, and call that V0, V1, V2, V3. Express the input in phasor form. 3 sine 50t becomes 0 minus J3. The frequency is 50, and that's used over here in the impedance. The capacitor becomes 1 over J omega C. This is minus J 200,000 ohms. Now, write the node equations. I've got four nodes. I need four equations for four unknowns. V0 is minus J3. That's my input. At node 3, the equation is V1 equals V2. V plus equals V minus. V2 is equal to 0, kind of obviously. And the third equation, or fourth equation, is at node 1. The current left, current through the 100k, and current through the minus 200k equals 0. So V1 minus V0 over 10k, plus V1 minus V3 over 100k, plus V1 minus V3 over minus J200k equals 0. Solve, and you get V3 is a complex number, 12 plus J24. What that means is V3 is 12 cosine 50t minus J24, or minus 24 sine 50t. Again, the real is cosine, minus J is sine. If you prefer polar form, then the amplitude is times the cosine, shifted by 63 degrees. Either form is correct. If you want to verify in circuit lab, build the circuit, make the input 7.9 radians per second, and omega is 2 pi f, so the 50 divided by 2 pi is the frequency, 7.958 hertz. Define your voltage nodes, and then do a time simulation. Uh, here I ran it for three cycles, so I take 1 over 7.98 hertz, that's the period, times 3, you know, a couple cycles to let it reach steady state. See, V0 is the blue line, that's my input. V1 is equal to V2, that's ground, and here's my output. Note the peak is 26.8 volts versus the which is what we calculated. And the peak is delayed at, from t equals 0 by 104 milliseconds. Uh, that delay divided by the period times 360 works out to minus 297 degrees. Same thing as our calculations. Second example. If I have two poles, again, same thing we did before. The trick is write your n equations and unknowns in MATLAB, I can solve real numbers, complex numbers, I don't care. The trick is get the equations right. To solve, I want to first convert to phasors. The voltage becomes 3 plus J0, 3 cosine, 0 sine. The impedances become 1 over J omega C, minus J250,000. I'll then define my voltage nodes. Here's B0, B1, B2, B3, B4. If I write five equations, five unknowns, I can solve. Those equations are V0 is 3 plus J0, that's my input. I know that V plus equals V minus, V2 equals V3. And at node 1, the current left, current right, current to V4 equals 0. At node 2, current left and down equals 0. At node 3, current left and right equals 0. Same thing we did before, except now I have complex numbers in there. MATLAB doesn't care. Just take your five terms, put in matrix form and solve, I'll get my voltages. Um, V4 is my output, that's Y. That tells me that Y is 5.8 cosine plus 2.7 sine. And the frequency stays the same. And here I misspelled 50. If I look on the screen, I'll see the same thing. My input is a blue line. Here's the output. The output is the voltage we calculated, 
5.8 volts. And, oops, that's in polar form. 5.8 plus 2.7 in amplitude gives you the voltage right here. The phase shift is a delay. T equals zero at the peak, so let's call this T equals zero. The output is delayed by 9.9 .9 milliseconds from the peak on the input. 9.9 .9 millisecond delay corresponds to 22 degrees versus what we calculated, 25 degrees delay. So again, op amps work just fine with phasers as well. Uh, next, we'll be looking at superposition. So we can uh, note, AC analysis is just like DC analysis if you don't mind using complex numbers. That's the reason we electrical engineers live and breathe complex numbers. Over the next four years, we'll be doing complex number calculations extensively. Make sure you have a calculator that can do complex numbers. It'll make a big difference on your grades.